Well, welcome back. Federal Reserve Chairman Jay Powell wrapped up day two of testimony on Capitol Hill yesterday. Kentucky Congressman Andy Barr pressed Powell on Fed policy, asking if the central bank would jeopardize access to capital for energy producers and fossil fuel companies. Watch. Do you acknowledge the role on, at the Fed related to business investment, regulation, uh, constraining, further constraining, potentially supply? We certainly do not want to be and are not in the business of allocating credit either to or away from <clears throat> any particular industry. We want those decisions to be made in, in the private sector. Well and joining us right now, the man himself, Congressman Andy Barr, is with me. And, Congressman, it's a great point that you made yesterday in that testimony. I want to get your take on his answer and this whole-of-government approach toward Biden's climate agenda. Well, good morning, Maria. Thanks for having me on the program. And it's a bad idea to politicize the allocation of capital, elevating non-pecuniary factors like environmental and social governance over and ahead of financial returns at any time, but especially and particularly right now when Americans are struggling with over $5 a gallon uh, gasoline, when the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission is warning that two thirds of the United States is at risk of power outages this summer because of precipitous and premature uh, transition away from fossil energy. Now is not the time to have the Fed or any financial regulator attempt to redirect capital away from the American energy sector. And it was um, encouraging to hear Chairman Powell recognize that. Yeah, I know. But the Securities and Exchange Commission has new rules now for all companies to follow with regard to their risks to climate change. You also have this massive focus on e e ESG investing. So you know that this administration and the Democrat Party in general is putting the pressure on corporate America uh, to either not do business with fossil fuel companies or lighten it up. Even yesterday, President Biden skips a, skips a meeting with oil executives after slamming them all, all year and instead met with wind industry leaders. Yeah. Yes, uh, ESG may have started in the European financial sector uh, with the woke asset managers or Wall Street banks, but uh, the Biden administration is making matters worse. And no doubt, uh, the Biden administration's canceling of the Keystone XL pipeline and other energy infrastructure projects, uh, its stonewalling of 4,400 permits to drill right now, its uh, refusal uh, to issue new uh, lease sales for oil and gas, all of that is no doubt contributing uh, to these high and record gas prices and energy prices and compromising the reliability of our electrical grid. But make no mistake about it, Maria, ground zero for Biden's war against American energy is the weaponization of financial regulation at the Securities and Exchange Commission and at other regulatory agencies. Uh, Secretary Yellen is at the center of this, in addition to Chairman Gensler at the SEC. And uh, there, is a, there is a concerted effort, as you say, and all of the government effort to weaponize financial regulation, to redirect capital, politicize the allocation of capital away from fossil energy. That's why Americans are feeling the pain at the pump right now. Yeah, I mean, we had Alex Sanchez on the other day, the head of the uh, Florida Bankers Association, and he said that you're going to see delistings. Companies are going to be forced to delist uh, because of all of this pressure and the costs, new costs that have come with it, uh, this climate change agenda. Huge costs, especially for, you know, the Florida Bankers Association, Alex Sanchez, or the Kentucky Bankers Association. When these regulations hit community financial institutions, the costs are immense. And when you look at the Securities right. and Exchange Commission proposal, look at what this is going to do in terms of costs to public companies. It's a huge disincentive for companies to go public, access the public markets, right. to, to list on exchanges because of the liability risk, the litigation risk. When you're required not only to disclose the emissions profile of your own operations, but also disclose the emissions of your suppliers, your customers. That is a That's massive right. burden, a compliance burden, uh, and it is going to be uh, a huge uh, a risk. And so this is not only about uh, increasing the cost of energy for Americans, it's also about hurting investors. The SEC's 
core mission, Maria, as you know, is to protect investors. But think about what this regulation will do. It will, it will put a, a huge volume of immaterial information in 10Ks for investors. Retail investors don't want this. Yeah. FINRA, 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 did a point, yeah. FINRA did a survey and less than a quarter of retail investors even know what ESG is. They, they want yeah. asset managers to prioritize financial returns. And this is jeopardizing the yeah. retirement security of millions of Americans. And woke asset managers I need to wake up and prioritize retail investors. Yeah, and I know that you've introduced the Insuring Sound Guidance Act. It's designed to protect retail investors' retirement and investment accounts from asset managers who, who put the environmental and social goals ahead of returns, Congressman. This ESG uh, seems to be taking over. Nancy uh, Tangler is with us this morning. Nancy, you're an investor. I mean, how yes. much pressure do you feel in terms of ESG? Jump in here with Andy Barr. Yeah, not one bit of pressure, Maria. Thank you. Um, I, I actually work with Andy Puzder uh, at, on the second vote ETFs. We, we're the underlying sub-advisor, and they, they are, um, in fact, putting profits before politics in those funds. So they create a list that we work from. Um, but but I do think it's a tragedy that um, many of these large asset managers are imposing their their political views on the underlying shareholders, which, you know, we start day one with our clients and say, don't invest your politics. But I'm curious uh, if, if Andy thinks the midterms will have any effect uh, with with the um, administration that is still in the White House, you know, unwilling to change their their view on many of these issues. Is there anything you can do after the midterms? Well, first of all, I applaud Nancy and other investment advisors who keep politics out of capital allocation for their clients. That's what they should be doing. That's why I introduced the Insuring Sound Guidance Act that would require investment advisors and ERISA plan sponsors to prioritize financial returns over these non-pecuniary political factors. Um, but what I would say about this is it's, it's very clear that the Biden administration is intent on continuing its uh, politicization uh, effort and weaponization of financial regulation. So it's important uh, that a new majority be elected to Congress to hold these uh, agencies like the SEC accountable to shed light on this uh, and to protect investors, to fight for investors for financial returns. These ESG funds, Maria and Nancy, they cost on average 43% more in terms of fees, so that eats into returns. And right. in this recent in this recent sell-off, the ESG funds underperformed the market as, as a whole because uh, it's it's investing 101. It's about diversification. ESG is about concentration of risk as opposed to diversification of risk. When you're tech heavy and you have a huge tech yeah. sell-off and you don't have energy in your portfolio, you're going to take a higher level of loss than if you had a diversific diversified portfolio. So, so this is about this is about protecting investors. I, I know, but Congressman, look what this administration just did. They named the, one of the leaders at BlackRock as the new head of dealing with China and China policy, right? I mean, Mr. Donilon, how does your act affect BlackRock, which is the largest ETF provider? And obviously, Larry Fink has his own ideas about environmental uh, issues, and he votes that way, Andy. Right. And uh, what, what hypocrisy that uh, uh, Larry Fink and BlackRock is urging to investors to tri double, triple down into China, which is committing genocide. Talk about uh, social uh, issues uh, versus American energy companies. Uh, the, patri the, the patriotic position would be to support investing in American companies, not Chinese companies. But in any case, there should be freedom and allocation of, of capital and nobody no asset manager, BlackRock or anyone else, should be putting their political agenda ahead of the retail investors, uh, the assets of whom they manage. So that's what our bill does. Yeah. This is a multifaceted problem, though. Okay. We, need pro we need proxy advisory reform. Uh, we need to look at um, the, the stakeholder capitalism and holding uh, directors and officers accountable to prioritize shareholders over these non-investor mm. stakeholders. So th there's a lot to this issue. But at the end of the day, I yeah. think I think this e ESG movement and the regulations from the Biden administration that come with this is one of the greatest assaults on the free enterprise system uh, and capitalism. It's about coercion. Uh, it is not about the free flow of capital. We need
need to return to a model that is based on free enterprise, where investors hold the, the key decision making, not uh, woke asset managers who put their politics ahead of returns yeah. for, for everyday American investors who depend on returns for their college savings mm -hmm. and for their retirement savings. Sure. All right. Congressman, I'm glad we got into it. Good to see you this morning. We'll be watching the developments. Congressman Andy Barr in D.C. Thank Great you, sir. Great to see you. Quick Thank break. You. And then the Senate passed the first major piece of firearms legislation in decades. It is set.